Well, welcome. Welcome to another video. Finally got here. We're about 800 miles off uh, Gibraltar. And uh, yeah, we're, ju we're just here for, for two nights now. <laughs> I'm out with Rick and Rick's, uh, Rick's cousin, Si. Both got YouTube channels. I'll put the links below. You know Rick. Uh, Rick T Outdoor Adventure. There you go. He's got it in. And this is Simon. So uh, Simon does a lot of photography work. Um, Simon Eardley's wildlife photography. There we go. And like I say, links will be below. But have a look at his work. It is absolutely stunning. It'll blow you away. And do you paint as well, Simon? As well? Yeah, I do a bit of painting and all. Yeah. Paint by numbers. <laughs> so, yeah. Well recommended. Go and check him out and give him a sub. Unbelievable. And like I say, you guys know Rick, and if you've not subbed to him, well, what, what have you been doing? <laughs> so yeah, Billy. we've come... Don't forget Billy. Oh yeah, and Billy as well. Billy Bobs. Hey. He's there. Um, so we've come here, as you can see, the tide's out at the minute. So we've come to do a spot of uh, fishing for two days uh, with rod and also, is it long lines? Right? Yeah, we're going to put some long lines out to trunk lines or whatever you want to call them. Yeah. yeah. They'll be so, our best bet. You reckon? Yeah. So we're going to do that and uh, yeah, see if we can catch some some lunch, tea and supper. <laughs> we're thinking we might possibly come home with about 30 odd fish, <laughs> but we'll see. Right, we'll see you in a bit. Yeah, there's a, there's a good spot just around here. So the guys are just making uh, the anchor points here for the, the long lines to go into. Keeps it in place, does it, lads? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, ideally, the further it's knocked into the sand, the better. I mean, you know, a nice big five-foot stake could be nice with two foot knocked into the sand, but right. Got to use what you've got to use what you've got about, haven't you? You can knock it in like that, or if you want. You can dig a trench with your spade, about two foot deep, tie your long line around that, drop it down so that is buried in the sand. Alright. So you've effectively got an anchor. I'm with you, yeah, yeah. So that's another way of doing it. And you can always stick some uh, some willow in or something like that just so you can find where you put it. You know, if you're looking back out to see yeah, yeah. the end. Yeah, because that was going to be my question, how do we find them? <laughs> Fish sprawled all over me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The there we go. And if they're flat, you can't see the buggers. I know. Until, in, don't they? until you get there. Yeah. It's like, oh, I've not got out. This big line of bass would be good. Yeah, mm. exactly. You can see them. <laughs> you want silverfish. And the plan is to sell them to the restaurants on the way back. <laughs> Local. When you're doing stuff like this, always come prepared with wellies. I've not. <laughs> I don't own any wellies. The lads have gone off, they're uh, they're all wellied up. And I've got these boots on. So I'm having to hit it in both feet. Wow, this is proper survival now. Ant's got his feet out, that's it. It's the end game. Right, so we're at the point now, quite a ways from land, so we're going to uh, we're going to pop the lines in now. So that's me a long line there, and then we've got we've got two stakes, one for the top of the the, uh, the line, and then we walk out as far as the line is, pop that in and tie the other end to that one. Okay, so this is the one I made last night. So whether I can get it out without it all tangling up is beyond me. But we'll see ya. Eh?
How long have you been into it, Si? Well, fishing. No, well, like bushcraft and... Oh, have you nice. both been doing it together? I know you... Since we were kids? Yeah. Never used to call it bushcraft, did you? No, we were just dicking Dossing about. Dossing about in woods. <laughs> yeah, long time. We've always been into it outdoors, haven't we, Rick? Well, I'm, I'm saying that, a lot of other things got in the way of this, really. Yeah. My wife is very understanding, and uh, she prefers me doing this rather than I mean, messing about and picking computer games, which is what I were doing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Which is quite sad, really. But then you just actually open your eyes and you realise that yeah, what you're missing. Well, your time's go going fast, and you're you're missing it with your kids. You know, I, I was saying to Rick, I've already missed it with Jake. Whereas Charlie, he, he's proper into it, you know. Yeah. Uh, is this you eat with Jake or Haley? still come out of me and they're in their 20s. No, but this is what I mean. You've got them into it early. They've always been into it, so they will come out with you. The amount of times I've asked Jake to come out with us. They won't. You just won't do it. Which is sad really because it's proper quality time with your family, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. So it's all connected. So we've got about I think we're around about say about seven to ten hooks with a uh, lug worm on the bottom. And it's all spaced out. What Simon's done, pretty cool. Which is attached these beads to to that so that they're not clashing and getting tangled up. That's just perfect. So we're all set now to catch some decent fish. So this is Rick's line holder and it's made out of uh, birch bark. Dead lightweight. Right, Rick's just going to explain to us as to why we've put, um, if you have a look at size there, he's put it at that angle. I've gone for that angle with mine, and then Rick's gone pretty much straight out there. So we were just saying... Yeah, we're looking at covering all the angles, because uh, we're on Moycan Bay, and uh, you've got fast tides that are coming in, and they come, they come around on different angles. So it's not just running in straight to the land, if you will. So even looking at the sand here, if you look at the sand and you look at the uh, the movement of the waves, it's coming in from the left slightly on here. So we've got a good chance of it coming round these channels and across. So even wherever we, we've got every angle covered now, so we can have some coming in sideways, and some coming in across the hooks, and then maybe coming down. But uh, like I say, there's no set exact pattern. No, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we've got it. Hopefully we've got all the angles covered Yeah. when that sea eventually comes in. But you can see out here, where you've got this body of water out here that's lower than this, it'll come round there first, so it'll come round to our left first, and then it'll start coming across and joining right. up. So it'll come across from that way there. Okay. Right, we're just setting up camp. Uh, we just found this nice little little nook at the top of the cliffs, overlooking the sea, which I'll show you the view in a bit. It's uh, going to go through. But we've got my rucksack again, uh, which is what we got: instant noodles, curry flavour. So we've got a few of them. Wipes, chicken flavour noodles. And that is pretty much it really. Um, I've brought some bacon for the morning. Uh, 
but it might well be fish. What do you reckon, Rick? Do you think yeah. we'll be on fish for breakfast? Definitely. We reckon we're going to be on that, so it might be a mixture of surf and turf. <laughs> um, and then in the cooking pot, like I said, I did a little Instagram post yesterday showing you what I'm taking, really. So we've got some, uh, some proper coffee. And then we've got a couple of spuds in there, an onion, and some uh, some Rogan Josh curry paste. And that is literally it, along with water. Cooking bag, which is my uh, me little coffee pot. And then you've just got bits and bats in there. I've got a new chopping board, a little chopping board that I got, which is dead lightweight. That's not bad. And uh, yeah, fire lighting equipment, more wipes, and then what I want is the tarp because we're going to set up now. So as you can see, the sea is coming in. That's uh, in that direction is where we we put the long lines out. But uh, what time are we on now? We are on. 20 past three and that is literally it come from nowhere that's how fast this sea comes in pretty scary really so i'll take you around camp in a minute we're all set up for the evening Other side is uh, picking some blackberries. And I'm just going to show you our setups. So, this is my monstrosity. I don't know what you would call it. Pretty much an airframe tent of some sort, but it's the best I could come up with. So, I'm a bit short on tent pegs. But I've, uh, I've tightened it up best I can. Take you in to have a look. A bit of a closer look. Lots of room in the 3x3 three three tarp. And both ends are open, but I'm going to go lengthways because there's a nice little hump there for my head for a pillar, so that'll be perfect tonight. And just down that side where that big hole is now, um, I've had to dig out a load of cow muck. So that's gone. So at least it's clean now. So that's my setup. So I can crawl in there. It should be quite good. I was actually going to face out to the sea, but Rick were talking about the weather and the wind coming in. And there's meant to be a bit of a bit of a thunderstorm about four o'clock tonight. Uh, the tomorrow tomorrow morning. So I would have got wet through with how I was planning it. So. We've gone for this configuration, I reckon, so we should be all right. So that's mine. Going on to uh, size set up. Now, he's pretty much got the same design, A-frame, but he's actually done a, a full-on tent. Struts and everything. Out of hazel, he's cut it. Oh, look at that. That ain't bad going, is it? So he's pretty sorted for tonight. Put the kit in there. Tap down on the floor, which I've not brought, but I thought I'd be alright with just a little yoga mat. <laughs> but we'll see. And then Rick's. Rick's is, uh, a one heck of a contraption in it Rick yeah. so it's, fishing rod on it. yeah so it's a frame <laughs> out of willow and then he's using his fishing rod as the pole which is what a perfect idea <laughs> straight down loads of room in there mate yeah it'll just be enough for me and Billy won't it yeah and there's what that's where Billy's gonna sleep there so that's um that's your basher in it all right yeah good job eh too bloody right. Not quite as big as your 3x3 torch, but uh, 
Well, I mean, they are quite big, them 3x3s, three aren't they? Oh, yeah, they're cracking. I need to get one of them as well. So, yeah, that's our setup there. So, we've all got, hopefully, a pretty level pitch where we're sleeping anywhere. And then we're just relaxing here, looking at the... The sea is fully in now, with the looks of it. And who'd have thought it come in that fast? It's quite scurvy, that. All right, I'm going to try the ball drill tonight. See if we can get it uh, started off that. Because we've no other light source apart from the ball drill and flint and steel. So if we don't catch any fish neither, we're not going to be able to either eat and we're not even going to be able to cook because we can't get a light. So this is proper survival this two day. I'm, I'm joking, there is a light, we have got lighters and stuff. How about sushi? Oh. Sushi, yeah. Sushi. Well yeah, yeah, sushi, why not, yeah. <laughs> but we're going to try it this way first anyway, have a bit of a laugh. So I made a new spindle. But trouble is, it's, solid, it? it's like quite thin, um, and the reason being is because the actual spindle's bent. If you look, <laughs> so I've been cut, I've been uh, cutting bits off to try and get it straight. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes anyway. Rick and, uh, and Simon have just been sat down doing not much really, <laughs> and I've uh, <laughs> concocted all this. <laughs> So I've made this uh, this nice pot holder, pot stand. Yeah, I'm lying. <laughs> totally lying. So we're pretty much ready. We've got enough there. This uh, this fire pit was actually already here uh, in the stone, so we're going to make use of it while we're here. Yeah, too right. And then I'm going to try now and uh, and get an ember. We'll see. Yeah. I was just about to start the ball drill and then realised I'd nothing to catch the ember if I got one so the lads have come up with the idea of this contraption basically it's cow part <laughs> dried cow part they've given me to get this ember so I better get one now aren't I? <laughs> let's give it a go yeah. I'll just move away from this lot of cow part though <laughs> <laughs> oh man right here we go Oh man. Yeah, got man. Got it. Oh, we're feeling that then. We're right. feeling that. Remember to take bottom off your uh, drill. Ah, nothing. No. Damn it. Ah. Yeah, we're clean that. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, I'll just quickly. Have you got your knife here? Yeah. Damn. Oh man. I think we've got it. It's looking good.
Oh, beautiful. Fast as that uh, grass, Hans. <coughs> However, this is going to be good enough. Copat Ember. How about that? <laughs> Probably a first on YouTube, that, Rick. <laughs> Ember by Copat. <laughs> by Rick T. I don't know Outdoor if this adventure. is going to be a little bit too, too damp. Decent size, that, isn't it, as well? Yeah, just let it build up a bit. I can't help but follow it with your head. <laughs> well, just gives it a more consistent airflow than blowing on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, we've got a crack. Here we go. And it don't burn my hands. Well done, man. We have fire. Well done. That's awesome, that. One day I'll get it. <laughs> right, you will. Good stuff, mate. That was awesome. Got it, didn't we? Oh, you did again. <laughs> You've not had a go of it. No. Have a go with that side, that set sacks, you know it works. Yeah, not mine that. Do I hurt? No. We could have done with a lot more grass really, just to make sure this stays in. I'm going to get some more if I can. We're in. We might not be so bad. We have bone dry wood as well, innit? Yeah. It's a good little set, that, Ant. Yeah, I won't too, 
I weren't too happy with the spindle, like I say, it's a bit bent. Well, it's, yeah, and it's a little bit thin, to it be fair. It is thin, yeah, yeah, I knew it. I knew, as I was carving more off and yeah. trying to get it straight, I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah it's going to be like a woman uh, hand drill this. But it did the job, but, but a bit fatter, you're going to get more friction on the drilling end, and it's easier for your uh, your cordage. You've got more grip round <coughs> cordage there. Yeah, I know, I know. Oh, nice one. We got it though, guys. That is awesome. So, we now have fire to cut with. Can we catch? Of course we can. <laughs> I think we can. Just stay at that steady pace while it fills that knot. Ooh. Yeah, once you get it going, just stay like at a steady yeah. pace. So Simon's just finished his first ball drill and he's got an ember. I'm not happy. <laughs> I've been doing it for 20 years now and only had two embers. <laughs> and he's come along and he's just bang one off straight away. No hassle. Oh man, that's ace. So Rich just gone finding some more Dry, hopefully dry grass that we can uh, we can try and get this in a bird nest, a bird's nest, and see if you can make flame with it. Bet you're chuffed, aren't you, Simon? Yeah, it's a good feeling, isn't it? Like that. I've got a bit of a red glow going on there. That's pretty darn good, that. Nice one, mate. Ah. Simon's going for ember number two. We didn't have the the grass to capture it but we're right now so hopefully so Simon's found his vocation in life he's becoming a bushcraft extraordinaire just like Rick <laughs> this is his second ember on his second time it's in the using the board. It's in the blood. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got a little bird's nest just at the side, and hopefully, he'll be able to uh, convert this into fire. And then he can leave the temple. Yeah, we had flames then. There we go. You got it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so. Awesome, mate. <laughs> that is awesome. Well done, well done man. man. Yeah. Awesome, mate. <laughs> Good stuff. Right, I'll have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, well, we know the, we mean, the, the kit works. Yeah, that works. So awesome that. We know you can get it. I think that way. That was the big thing, making sure that proper round section. Yeah. You know, because if it's slightly over, it starts going. D -d 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 yeah, yeah. You know, and it's it's only hitting in like one part. Right. So it's, so it's got to be round. Got to be round. Right. Okay. That's another tip. It was now. just slightly elliptical. Right. You know, only very slightly, but. Brilliant. Nice job, man. What was in? It's turning out to be a very good bushcrafting weekend. <laughs> Right guys, we're going to head down now because the sea's uh, pretty much receded there and the seagulls what look to be on our lines so we're going to go and get down there now and see if uh, we can retrieve. There's the first one. 
what what we've got. Oh, yeah. Nice. So what's fish, that? Isn't it it yeah. is a bonny fish, isn't it? Um, it's either a, a dab or a flounder. Yeah, I'm not beautiful. sure. I think it's a dab. So that's one. That's a Good keeper. Man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, that's small mouse. Yeah, yeah, I'll get that out in a minute. Yeah. Take it off there. So what else have you got? Another one there. Yeah, another one. Nice. Another one there, nice and camouflaged. He is. It's oh. not a bad size, they're much there. They're all neat, aren't they? Yeah. Look at that for the. Oh! It's got itself wank. Oh, got itself word. tied up there, hasn't it? An eel. Look at that. Proper tied up, it's actually wrapped around the hook. Oh, so that's it. Never seen an eel close up. Like a snake. Oh man, that's <laughs> that's proper slimy. <laughs> Gosh, can't you tell I'm new to this? Look at that. That is proper slimy. <laughs> oh man. Let's go and have a look at my lines. Gotta be really careful as to where these hooks are. I'm going to lift it up as we go along and see. Oh yeah, please mate. There's nothing there. Nothing, nothing. Oh, seriously? Nothing! Oh, I'm gutted. I'm gutted. I'm the only one who's not got nothing. Ah, oh, man. Oh well, that's just one tide done. We've got uh, at least another couple more before we go. You are? Yeah, I'm gutted. Thought I'd get one, easy. With it being a flat, is there any difference in gutting them? Yeah, yeah, you want to look for uh, which, which uh, its belly is. So yeah. obviously it's flatter there. So I'm looking for its belly, which is this side, okay. and I'm going to come in behind the gill, in across and down, and pull its head back, and pull all its guts out with it. Okay, right. My hook's in there as well, so I'm just going to try and save my hook. Get me... Uh, I'm struggling to focus now. Yeah, so I've got with him anyway. Okay. So, I might try and pull me up through that other way. So that's one done. We might be able to use them guts. Yeah, I'm going to leave them on it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah too right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so you get a look out or each side. No, they're too, they're too deep, Rick. I'm just yeah, going to cut them off. and. Got him and then might bring it out of his jaw. Yeah, I've got some fresh hooks. I'll um <clears throat> sorry about the footage guys to the left hand side of your screen, but I've just dropped the camera in uh in all this. Have you cleaned him already? Yeah. So we've got one on. Did that Binny? Watch that. Hey. Did you eat that? Did you eat that given half a chance? I remember when Flint, I took two big flatties home once from so Simon's just cutting it now. We're gonna eat well tonight, I think. So when you when you're gutting fish in in at the vent, all right, just open the vent up a bit, straight down to the head. Obviously, you're taking the head off this eel, but then just get your thumbnail right up against the spine, and it take all that. You get a lot of blood and yeah. gubbins in there. So just while you're cleaning it out, just get it out with your thumbnail. 
nice and clean. And there you go, pure flesh there. Great stuff. I mean, it's not all that bloody not critical, but it does change the taste of it a bit, doesn't it? Yeah. Right. So this is an eel. I've never had eel in my life, so this is going to be interesting. I'm going to cut it up, make some nice steaks out of it. Here's our catch for today. So we've got, how many did we get? One, two, three, four, five, and the eel, six. A decent haul. Not bad. Feed yourself with that, couldn't you? Yeah. What do you reckon, Billy? <laughs> what do you smell like that? I'm just doing it with a mora here as well. So we've not got out, uh, so we're only gonna get little fillets out of this one. And we'll see if we can, uh, we can de-skin these. So, right, let's do a bit of, uh, that's what bushcraft is all about. Yeah. Utilizing stuff. Exactly. Even a gottle of gear. <laughs> Like I say, I'm only using it more, but great little knives though, aren't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? I've got the open all in there if you want to use that bit. Yeah, it's alright, the job this. Okay. Yeah. Eyes out on his fat bike, nicks everyone's long line. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I'm just rinsing these off now because they're a little bit worse for wear. Right, so it's the turn of the eel now. We'll get rid of that bit, I think. Actually, there's the fins, so we'll get rid of that. It's pretty darn tough. So that's it uh, cut up into tuna steaks, really. <laughs> so yeah, I'm interested into what it's going to taste like this. Never had a eel before. 